so all these days we were talking about anti cancer drugs and uh, some of the last few drugs maybe i think you can look into those things latest advances also you look into those i try to explain you all the fundamentals of anti cancer therapy and uh, now we will look into immunomodulators what do you mean by immunomodulators see immunity is very important and uh, when you are it can be either immunomodulators can be either immunostimulants or immunosuppressants you need to suppress the immunity while doing transplant therapy or during some of the therapeutic procedures is important to suppress the immunity and you need immunostimulants once the immunity is suppressed person becomes vulnerable for all kind of diseases that is why immunity has to be motivated or encouraged or, or or boosted immuno boosters also it is called as so in immuno modulators we study about immuno suppressants and immuno stimulants now the first thing we look at is immuno suppressants so this immunity the immune system evolved the discriminate self from non self okay so there is innate or it is also called as a natural immunity it is broadly reactive and this does not require priming because whatever you do it is already there in a person so we are all immune against many organisms and uh, the environment and it naturally develops that's what we call it as innate immunity and uh, but adaptive immunity adaptive immunity or learned immunity is antigen specific so that depends upon the antigen exposure so or also it is called the priming and this has a high affinity for example now you are exposed to an antigen called as cholera so that antigen will boost your immunity so tomorrow when the cholera comes in generally you may not get or for example you see the best example is you go to the slum areas will you get sick who is there yes. you get sick no but why yes. children who live in slum does not get sick immunity is developed for that yes. area because they are exposed to that organism they are exposed to the antigen and out there is called as a primed by this antigen and as a result they are immunity is boosted up or their antibodies are developed against that antigen so their immunity is better so two arms of immunity works closely together with innate or immunate or it is also called as the natural immunity system being more active early in the immune response and then the second is adaptive immunity because progressively dominant over a time adaptive immunity comes in as a person gets adapted to the immune conditions okay so the major effectors of the innate or natural immunity are complement you know what is complement complement system complement granulocytes monocytes macrophages then there are natural killer cells mast cells basophils these are all the high molecular weight proteinaceous materials present in the blood okay so the major effectors of innate yeah i told you that the major effectors of adaptive immunity are t cells and b lymphocytes b lymphocytes make antibodies t lymphocytes function as helper cells cytosolytic and regulatory cells one minute huh? it's calling <laughs> okay sir i have sent you two mails two mails for two different studies one is for adult neurology and other one is for pediatric neurology
okay these cells are important in the normal immune response to infections and and the tumors and also mediate transplant rejections and autoimmunity okay so you uh, the immunoglobulins that is b lymphocytes are b lymphocyte surfaces are receptors of large variety of specific structural conformations whereas t lymphocytes recognize the antigens as peptide fragments in context with the self major histocompatibility complex that is mih mhc as antigen and also uh, it is also called as human leukocyte antigen hla on the surface of the antigen present cells and uh, they are also present they are also called as dendrite cells macrophages and uh, they are of uh, class 1 and class 2 antigens once activated by specific antigen so you need very specific antigen for antibody production once anti activated by specific antigen recognized by the respective clonally restricted cell surface receptors both b and t lymphocytes are triggered to differentiate and divide leading to release of soluble mediators that is cytokines lymphokines that are effector and regulators of the immune response so that is a way how the immune response continues the impact of the immune system in human disease is enormous there are varieties of immuno immunological disorders see this rheumatoid arthritis is a immunological diabetes 1 that type 1 diabetes mellitus has an autoimmune disease it is immunological as a result of autoimmune disorder the beta cells gets inactivated then asthma then should the malignancy these are all growing as an epidemic proportion that requires aggressive and innovative approaches to develop the new treatments now the immune system and mediated graft rejection remains a big challenge because when you do the organ transplant then the organ they like for example kidney transplant heart transplant liver transplant so many transplants happen these days then what is done is the immune system is totally suppressed till the tissue is adapted to the person once it is adapted then slowly immunity is the increase and so that is where this immunomodulation becomes very important you have to externally modulate the immunity so as i told you there are two things immunosuppression and immunostimulation let me see i will try to complete immunosuppression today and uh, i will be happy if i put my hand on to starting immuno uh, immunostimulation also and so the major class of immunosuppressive drugs are glucocorticoids these are the danger drugs you know about very well about glucocorticoids then calcineurin inhibitors then anti proliferative or anti metabolic agents then there are a lot of biologicals or also antibodies as a immunosuppressive agent so these drugs have have achieved a high degree of clinical success in treating conditions such as immune rejections of organ trans transplants and severe autoimmune diseases so <clears throat> these therapies require a lifelong use of non specifically suppress the entire immune system as a result once the immune system is suppressed then the person becomes exposed to the the risk of infections is very very dangerous so as long as you are healthy make sure that your immune system is very very strong so they these drugs like calcineurin inhibitors and glucocorticoids are nephrotoxic and diabetogenic they are uh, restricting their usefulness in a variety of clinical setting so immunosuppression though it is useful but it is extremely dangerous okay so the monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies directed at reactive t cells are important adjuvant therapies and provide unique opportunity to target specifically immune reactive cells okay there are many smaller molecules are there many smaller antibodies are there they have been used as immunosuppressants so 
also this MTOR, this mammalian target rapamycin inhibitors, MTOR, then sirolimus, enverormus, and uh, then your anti CD25, interleukin CD25 with antibodies. Then there are other drugs like bacilimab, then des declimimab. These target the growth factors. They, as a result, they limit the clonal expression and potentially promote the tolerance. Okay. So first drug we will look at is glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids, they, as I'm sure you've studied glucocorticoids enough, both in B farm and somewhere in M farm also. They are the wonder drug and danger drug. See, this is one drug which has got, see, if a person has got extreme inflammation everywhere, don't know what to do, one steroid therapy, fellow comes back to normalcy. Acute cough or acute asthma, he's already given up steroid, comes back to normalcy. So glucocorticoids are commonly combined with immunosuppressive agents to prevent the free transplant rejections. Okay, so high dose of intravenous methylprednisolone, sodium succinate are used to reverse the active transplant, acute transplant rejections and acute exacerbations of selective autoimmune disorders. So glucocorticoids are efficacious for treatment of graft versus diseases in bone marrow transplantations, okay? Bone marrow transplantation is a very common, uh, very common procedure, especially for uh, some of the an anemic conditions. So glucocorticoids are routinely used to treat autoimmune disorders and acute, uh, acute multiple sclerosis. In addition, these glucocorticoids have allergic really have uh, limits allergic reactions. I told you there is a very bad allergy, then glucocorticoids generally given. Uh, they are treated along with immunosuppressive agents and are used to trans transplant the, the cytokine storm caused by the treatment with the moromoid CD3 and uh, also thymoglobulin. So these are amazing anti-allergens, glucocorticoids. That is why, have you heard of some of the, uh, this uh, herbal uh, anti-allergens? Many people, uh, some of the quacks sell them. They say this has got amazing anti-allergens. So people go take it. You won't be knowing that they will be using a high concentration of prednisolone in that, steroids. So steroids invariably are they, they, are, they act against the, the allergic, but they're extremely dangerous, okay? Unfortunately, chronic use of steroids often results in disabling or life-threatening adverse reactions. You have already studied a glucocorticoid that is, chapter is there. Look into more into that. There's nothing more dangerous than glucocorticoids. So glucocorticoids, once you see things going wrong, better to manage the dose very, very cautiously, okay? But it is an essential for transplant patients. Now, calcineurin inhibitors, most effective, these are one of the group, one of the class of most suppressive, immunosuppressive drugs, and uh, cyclosporin is one of the very effective, and tacrolimus, these are the very commonly used calcineurin inhibitors. They target intracellular signaling pathways and induce the consequence of T cell, T cell receptor activations. Although these two compounds are structurally unrelated, but they bind to distinct molecular target. As a result, they inhibit normal T cell signal transduction, especially by the same mechanism. And that is why they are used as a very good cyclist. Have you used cyclosporin any time in the lab? No. Okay. You need to use cyclosporin. We use it uh, for the, what is that? For the, uh, for the. Cancer activity. It's not just cancer activity. Also chromosomal aberrations. Chromosomal aberrations. Correct. Chromosomal aberration. 
okay from now cyclosporin suppresses the humoral immunity much more effective against the t cell dependent immune mechanisms that underlie the transplant rejections and also forms the autoimmunity so it preferentially inhibits the antigen triggered signal transduction in t lymphocytes as it causes the blunting the expression of many lymphocyte lymphokines including il2 and the expression of anti apoptotic proteins cyclosporin also increases expression of transforming growth factor b a potent inhibitor of il2 stimulated t cell proliferation and also generation of cytotoxic lymphocytes okay so therapeutic applications the clinical indications of cyclosporin are it is basically used to suppress the immunity in transplant heart transplant liver transplant kidney transplant many organ transplant if you are to do use cyclosporin as a this uh, immunity suppressor also it is used therapeutically for rheumatoid arthritis and for psoriasis okay cyclosporin usually is combined with other agents especially group glucocorticoids and azathioprines and uh, mycophenolates uh, uh, <coughs> for the respective the suppression immunosuppressant activities in rheumatoid arthritis cyclosporin is used in severe cases that have not been that are not responded to methotrexate okay so cyclosporin can be combined with methotrexate but the levels of both drugs must be monitored very closely in psoriasis cyclosporin is indicated for the treatment of adult immunocompetent patients with severe and disabling disease for whom system therapies are systematic therapies have been failed and that is why you need to bring in an immunosuppressant okay and uh, so in fact cyclosporin is also used successfully in inflammatory bowel disease um, which is again an horrible gi disorder okay toxicity see the principal adverse reaction of cyclosporin therapy is renal dysfunction it just destroys your kidney and the tremors hysteresis that means everywhere hair will grow hypertension hyperlipidemia gum hyperplasia then hyperuricemia may worsen you know hyperuricemia uric acid concentration increases that will cause gout gautic arthritis then it causes increased p glycoprotein activity then hypercholesteremia nephrotoxicity is one of the severe problem and as a result see nowadays many patients have nephrotoxicity as a result patients will die the kidney will go off the hypertension occurs in 50% of the renal transplant and almost all the cardiac patients so combined with the calcineuration in calcineurin inhibitors glucocorticoid is particularly diabetogenic the healthy people will become diabetic once they are taking the cyclosporin or even that steroid it becomes a diabetogenic so or it is taken both combined with glucocorticoids and this uh, cyclosporin definitely person will become diabetic cyclosporin um, produces elevation of the ldl and cholesterol that means it causes hyperlipidemia okay so it's not a very healthy drug but unfortunately there is no other option similarly tacrolimus tacrolimus is a macrolide antibiotic okay it is produced from an organism streptomyces pseudobiasinesis so it's a macrolide antibiotic but like cyclosporin it inhibits the t cell activation by inhibiting calcineurin so tacrolimus binds to an intercellular protein fk506 binding protein and immunophilin structural related to cyclophilin the complex of tacrolimus fkb12 calcium cadmolin calcineurin then forms a calcineurin phosphate activity then as a result calcineurin phosphate activity is inhibited 
the inhibition of phosphatase activity prevents uh, dephosphorylation and nuclear translocation of NFAT and inhibits the deactivation. So this is its mechanism. So although the intracellular receptors differ, cyclosporin and tacrolimus must have the same target, same pathway for immunosuppression. Therapeutic application. Tacrolimus is indicated for prophylaxis of solid organ allograft rejections in a manner uh, akin to cyclosporin and rescue therapy in patients with rejection despite therapeutic levels of cyclosporin. So in of all these organ transplant, this can be used along with cyclosporin or independently. But like cyclosporin, as we saw earlier, the nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity are one of its solid side effects. Nephrotoxicity and neurotoxicity. Neurotoxicity includes tremors, headache, motor disturbances, seizures, then GI complaints, hypertension, hyperkalemia, hyperglycemia, and, and diabetes are all associated with tachromatosis use. Or like the way we saw earlier, this is diabetogenic drug. And Tracrylimus has a negative effect on the pancreatic beta cells, glucose intolerance, and uh, uh, diabetes complications are developed as a result of this tracrylimus. And other, it also increases the risk of secondary tumors and opportunistic infections. So why? Because when the when this drug is given, tracrylimus is given, the, the immunity level dips down. When the immunity dips down, the opportunistic organism just enters inside and attacks anybody. So one thing I'll tell you, you need to take care of your immunity. I don't know whether I've told you about one of our students whose immunity dipped down by me because of she was constantly anemic, then she became tuberculosis patient. Okay, so if you don't take care of your immunity, you don't know what kind of infection will come in because we breathe organism so this uh, this actually for healthy people mask and washing hand is not required because we are we have strong immunity mask and washing hand is required only for people who are immunocompromised okay okay chalo let's go to next drug anti proliferative and anti metabolic agent and uh, so cirrolimus Cyrolimus is again a macrocyclic lactone produced by a microorganism. So this cyrolimus inhibits the T lymphocyte activation and proliferation downstream of IL-2 and T cell growth, growth factor receptors. So like cyclosporin, the tacrolimus therapeutic action of uh, so, the, 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 like cyclosporin and tacrolimus, the therapeutic activity of uh, cyrolimus requires a formation of complex with an immunophilin, and uh, in this case, immunophilin is FB, FKBP12, and this cyclosporin, this becomes a cyrolimus FKPB12 complex that does not affect the calcineurin activity but inhibits the protein kinase that is a key enzyme in cell, cell cycle progression. And that is what is designated as TMTOR. Okay, so inhibition of MTOR blocks the cell cycle progression at G1 to S phase of transition. Now, what is therapeutic use? Therapeutic use, Cyrillimus, is indicated for prophylaxis of organ transplant rejection in combination with calcium inhibitors and glucocorticoids. So in patients experiencing or high risk of calcium inhibitors associated with nephrotoxicity, cyrillimus has been used with glucocorticoids and uh, to avoid permanent renal damage. Okay, so because toxicity, especially nephrotoxicity is such a common thing over here, one need to closely monitor. In case of nephrotoxicity, you must be closely monitoring the creatinine to see whether the patient is vulnerable. Okay, now let's look at the toxicity. So, cyrillimus 
in renal transplant patient is associated with a dose dependent increase in the serum cholesterol or triglyceride while immunotherapy with sirolimus per se is not nephrotoxic but patients treated with cyclosporine uh, plus sirolimus have impaired renal functions compared with patients treated with cyclosporine alone other adverse effects include anemia leukopenia thrombocytopenia hypo or hyperkalemia fever and gastrointestinal effects delayed wound healing may also occur as with other immunosuppressive agent there is an increased risk of neoplasms especially lymphomas and infections okay let's go to the next drug everolimus 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 is closely related to sirolimus but it has a distinct pharmacokinetics activities and uh, this in combination with calcium inhibitors and mtor inhibitor reduces worse renal functions that at one year or than does calcium inhibitor so that is why though it is a good drug but its toxicity is pretty bad okay toxicity and drug interactions are pretty bad now one more drug azathioprine i'm sure you have read about azathioprine it is anti metabolite it is uh, mechanism action is the egg following exposure to nucleophilus such as glutathione azathioprine is cleaved to 6 mercaptopurine which in turn is converted to additional metabolites that inhibits the de novo purine synthesis so 6 thio imp and yeah, prodrolin nucleotide is converted to 6 thio gmp and finally i have just 10 more minutes okay my notice has come and finally to 6 thio is converted to dna incorporated in dna so a wrong molecule is incorporated in dna and cell proliferation is result is inhibited impairing the functions of lymphocytes so azathioprine to be more potent immunosuppressive agent than 6 mercaptopurine the therapeutic use of azathioprine azathioprine is indicated as an adjuvant for prevention of organ transplant rejections and in severe rheumatoid arthritis okay and uh, also it is uh, the lower initial doses are used for rheumatoid arthritis and a complete blood count and liver function tests are should be monitored so that it does not get into its toxic effect okay so the toxicity major side effects of azathioprine is bone marrow suppression once the result of bone marrow suppression what happens person becomes anemic isn't it so there will be leukopenia and thrombocytopenia and anemia are seen in the patients because of bone marrow suppression other adverse effects include increased susceptibility to infection especially the varicella and herpes simplex virus hepatotoxicity alopecia gi toxicity pancreatitis and increased risk of neoplasia okay let's go to the next drug now mycophenolate mefetil so this is a pro drug rapidly hydrolyzed to the mpa a selective non competitive and reversible inhibitor of inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase in an important enzyme in the de novo pathway of guanine nucleotide synthesis so both b and t lymphocytes are highly dependent on this pathway for cell proliferation while other cell types can be used to salvage the pathway so mpa therefore selectively inhibits the lymphocyte proliferation and functions including the antibody formation cell adhesion and migration this is the mechanism of its immunosuppression okay what is therapeutic application again all these are used as a prophylactic drugs for organ transplant 
and uh, but they are generally used along with glucocorticoids, calcineurin inhibitors, and uh, not azathioprine, but these two are generally used, and they both are also equally and more dangerous. Okay, for renal transplant patients and for all the cardiac transplant patients, generally this drug is commonly used. Toxicities, just like other drugs, leukopenia, diarrhea, omitting, and uh, the infections makes persons more infectious because the infectious level, because this one, the immunity level, dips on, become vulnerable to all the infections. Okay, so far we saw varieties of chemical bodies that are used generally as an antisuppressant, anti-immunosuppressants. Now we'll quickly have a look at antibodies, okay? Both on polyclonal and monoclonal antibodies against the lymphocyte cell-derived cell surface antigens are widely used for prevention and for treatment of organ transplant rejections. So monoclonals have uh, overcome the problems of variability in efficacy and toxicity seen in the polyclonal products but are more limited in their target specificity. So both polyclonal and monoclonal products have a place for immunosuppressive therapy. Okay, so it depends upon which one is more specific for what conditions. Okay, let's look at the first one. Anti-thymocyte globulin. Anti-thymocyte globulin is a purified gamma globulin from serum rabbit immunized with human thymocyte. What is its mechanism action? Thymocyte, anti-thymocyte globulin contains cytotoxic antibodies that bind to CD2, CD3, CD4, CD8, CD11, CD18, CD25, CD44, CD45, and HLA class 1, class 2 molecules on the surface of the T lymphocytes. Okay, so the antibodies deplete or decrease circulating lymphocytes by direct cytotoxicity and uh, block the lymphocyte functions by binding to cell surface molecules involved in the regulation of cell functions. Therapeutic applications, anti-thymocyte globulin is used for induction of immunosuppression. Although the only approved indication for the treatment of acute renal transplant rejections in combination with immunosuppressive agents. See, kidney transplant is very common and acute renal rejection, generally this is a drug of choice. So anti-lymphocyte depleting agents are, uh, will improve the graft survival. So a course of anti-thymocyte globulin treatment often is given to renal transplant patients with delayed graft functions to avoid early treatment with nephrotoxic calcineurin inhibitors, thereby it aids the recovery of ischemic perfusion injury. Okay, so there is no issue with ischemic perfusion injury. It may happen, but you need to see how do you manipulate the medication so as to delay or so as to aid the recovery of the ischemic reperfusion injury. So anti-thymocyte globulin also is used for acute rejection of other types of organ transplants and also for prophylactic rejections. So anti-thymocyte globulin is also used for acute rejections of many organ transplants and prophylactic rejections. Toxicity, again, they remain to be very toxic molecules may not be as complicated as toxic as uh, what we saw earlier. These toxicities include fever and chill and potential for hypotension. Pre-medication with glucocorticoids, acetaminophen or antihistaminics generally is given and to reduce these reactions. Serum sickness and glomerulonephritis can occur and maybe anaphylaxis also, but it is late. Then hematological complications include leukopenia and thrombocytopenia, okay? So there are many other immunosuppressive agents with increased risk of malignancy 
and uh, yeah, things like that. Now let's look at the monochromal antibodies. Some of the monochromal antibodies, anti-CD3 monochromal antibodies. These antibodies directed at a E chain of CD3, a trim trimeric molecule adjacent to T cells sector on the surface of the human T lymphocyte. These have been used with considerable efficacy in human transplant. Okay, anti C3 monoclonal antibodies. So these the or the these are originated from Ig2 anti human C3 monoclonal antibody morom map CD3 and it is uh, so these are all used in glucocoid resistant rejection episodes. Okay. Now I think I'll be going out of line, out of connections shortly. So I'll continue this class in my next class. And next class, I think we will have it on Tuesday. And I want you all to join as early as possible so that I can take my full 40 minutes class. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Today you all guys came in very late. And uh, yeah, see 10 of you. When I started only four were there but uh, remain six, you joined late. I don't want that to happen. Next class, uh, next Tuesday, maybe 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock is a convenient time? Yes, sir. Okay, 11 o'clock, next Tuesday, I will have a class. Block my time, okay? And I will complete this um, um, immunosuppressants, and then I'll go to immunostimulants, and we'll go to the next topic. Is that okay? Okay, Archana? You yes, send me the attendance. Okay. Okay. Sir. Awesome. Yes. Okay. All of you. Bye. See you next on next Tuesday.